Welcome to the Access Bank conference call to discuss the Q3 FI24 financial results. Participation in this conference call is by invitation only. Access Bank reserves the right to block access to any person to whom an invitation has not been sent. Unauthorized dissemination of the contents or the proceedings of the call is strictly prohibited and prior explicit permission and written approval of Access Bank is imperative. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of the briefing session. Should you need assistance during this conference call, you may signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. On behalf of Access Bank, I once again welcome all the participants to the conference call. On the call we have with us Mr. Amitabh Chaudhary, MD and CEO, and Mr. Puneet Sharma, CFO. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amitabh Chaudhary, MD and CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Sir, your audio is not coming. I believe you are on mute. Thank you, Nirav. Sorry, uh, didn't realize I was on mute. Good evening and welcome, everyone. Wish you all a very happy new year. We have on the call uh, Rajiv Anand, Deputy MD, Subhat Mohanty, ED, Manish Sharda, ED, Designate, of course, Puneet Sharma, and other members of the leadership team. Over the last few years, we have set Access Bank on the course of a predictable and sustained high performance guided by a GPS strategy, which is centered on our customers and our colleagues. We had the opportunity to highlight our execution rigor, distinctiveness, and differentiation at our analyst day in November 2023. The Indian economy continues with upward momentum in quarter three and remains a beacon of optimism globally. A mix of judicious and bold policy moves has placed India in a sweet spot which bodes well for the sector in the medium term. In quarter three financial 24, we act in access delivered strong operating performance led by robust sequential growth across loan and deposits. Let me briefly highlight them. The bank has delivered an ROE greater than 18% for the last six quarters now, while maintaining a better credit profile as compared to the past, instilling confidence and its sustainability across economic cycles. The bank has organically net accreted 39 basis points of CD1 capital in nine months financial year 24. On loan growth, all the three segments delivered strong sequential growth with retail, SME, and corporate book gloss of IBPC sold, growing 5%, 4%, and 3% quarter on quarter, respectively. On deposits, we have improved the quality of our granular franchise significantly, with our LCR outflow rates and cash flow ratio being the best in class in the sector today, and our retail term deposit growth improving to 12 quarter high. Mm -hmm. On cards and payments, we saw strong traction in new card issuances, cards in force, and spends led by our strategic partnerships. On the merchant acquiring business too, we have now attained leadership position, the terminal market share of close to 19% as of our November 23, with widespread adoption of our innovative technology-based product offerings. On digital and technology, open by access, conduced with the highest rated mobile banking app, with a rating of 4.8 on the Google Play Store. On the iOS the app store as well, open by access rating has increased to 4.7 this quarter from 4.6 earlier. Neo, our cutting edge, Digital product offering for corporate and SMEs is deepening our transaction banking relationship amongst clients. Access Bank has been recognized in the highest leadership category with score of 77 in the Indian Corporate Governance Scorecard, recently published by Institutional Investor Advisory Services, with the valuation framework built around globally accepted G20 OECD standards and principles. We have tried to be ahead of the curve towards building a bank for the future with deep investment of management time and resources in our chosen areas of distinctiveness, namely digital, Bharat banking, and customer obsession. We stay focused on three core areas of execution of our GPA strategy, namely embedding a performance-driven culture, strengthening the core, and building for the future. On embedding a performance-driven culture, uh, there is visible improvement in the retail deposit growth and the quality of our deposit franchise. The growth trajectory of retail term deposits continue to improve with 17% year-on-year and 2% quarter-on-quarter growth on period and basis, and 15% year-on-year and 3% quarter-on-quarter on QAD basis. Our low-cost cost of share at 42% is among the best in the industry, and has compounded at 14% for the last three years. In quarter three, we added 100 branches, 
taking the overall branch additions to 349 for the nine month period for a preferential at 24, uh, which is among the highest in the industry. Further, we are doubling down on our deposit mobilization strategy led by two large transformation initiatives, Siddhi, which is a super app for our employees, and Project Triumph. We spoke about them during the analyst day. We have enabled every business vertical and channel through tools and platforms like video-based customer identification process, bring your own device and Siddhi app to serve our customers real time and onboard new customers with minimal friction. We have a strong foundation for a liability franchise. We continue to work on the deposit leadership roadmap we set a year back, and we expect to realize the full potential of this transformation in the next six to seven quarters. We are also seeing all-round growth across businesses. We are market-leading growth in our focus segments. While retail lending, within retail lending, we continue to drive balanced growth across the product portfolio. The retail disbursements in quarter three financial year 24 were the highest ever for a non-financial year closing quarter, aided by improved customer sentiments and strong festive demand. Domestic corporate loans, gross of IVs we sold, grew 23% year on year and 3% quarter on quarter, led by a healthy pickup across sectors. The disbursement part line for quarter four continues to be healthy. And the semi segment continues to remain a key growth driver for the bank. The combined portfolio of mid corporate SMEs and small businesses grew 30% year on year and 5% quarter on quarter, and now constitutes 21% of the loan book, up 620 basis points in the last three years. On strengthening the core, on wholesale banking, we have replicated the success of our digital consumer banking app with Neo for corporates. We have been on the journey for two years, and we now have a validation for the strong product market fit based on how quickly our clients have embraced it. On transaction banking APIs, we continue to see strong interest from corporates across industry segments with 3.7 times growth in corporate onboarding, along with 7 times growth in transactions and 4.8 times growth in throughput. Neo for Business, our mobile-first transaction banking platform tailored for SMEs, continues to scale up in terms of customer onboarding. We saw an increase over 25% in digital, digital usage among these customers with the introduction of business banking specific features. We are in the process of rolling out a host of beyond banking features, which will include things like ERP integration, payroll, and inventory management. We have also rolled out Neo for corporates, our internet banking proposition for large corporates, to all new customers, and we are in beta testing with existing corporate clients. With full rollout of the new, Axis remains on track to become the operational bank of choice for our wholesale banking clients. As far as building for the future is concerned, digital banking performance continues to remain strong. The open by Axis Bank balance sheet has an increase of 48% in deposits and 86% increase in loans. We launched a new digital savings account proposition, Amaze, that provides customers attractive joining offers and spend-based rewards for a nominal monthly fees. We also launched and scaled new products, including FD for standalone credit card customers, US dollar FDs and Gibson D for NRI customers, and new loan and insurance products on open. Our bank-wide programs to build distinctiveness uh, continue. Our bet on Bharat banking is growing from strength to strength. The quarter three financial year 24 disbursements are up 46% year on year. Rural advances are up 34% year on year, and deposits from Bharat branches are 11%, thereby aiding the PSL and profitability metrics. We have expanded our multi product distribution architecture to 2,420 branches, complemented by 63,500 CFC network and 80 partners across the industry. Our digital co lending platform is live with 10 plus partners, and the volumes are growing 80% plus quarter on quarter. We are building a pioneering end to end omni channel and digital delivery model for the Rusu markets using the Salesforce platform. This will help us scale sustainably over the next three years. Sparsh, our customer obsession program is helping improve relationship and transaction intensity with our customers. Over the last 21 months, NPS across 12 retail customer journeys has moved up to 141 over an index baseline of 100 as you listen to and act on the voice of our customers. NPS is now an important lead indicator for us to invest in areas that matter to our customers. Sparsh is a bank-wide priority. It is embedded in rituals and practices across all the 5,250-plus branches, all our customer touch points, and in the conduct of every employee. On Citibank and new business integration, the city integration remains on track. The required business portfolio matrix trending in line with internal estimates. Deposits are stable. 
and there has been improvement in cost of metrics, metrics across wealth insurance and retail assets. Nearly all the 77 initiatives that were identified across cost cell deepening, sales productivity, and cost rationalization remain on track and monitored by the board. We expect to complete data migration and system integration by end of first half financial year 25. In closing, the growth momentum in India continues to be strong. We have taken global headwinds and higher interest rates in our stride. Consumer sentiment remains healthy with improved capacity utilization across sectors for corporates. The factors are ideal for an uptick in private capex. The deposit growth in the system is a challenge with a tight liquidity environment. We expect this to continue till inflation reaches the lower bound of the range. We foresee the system credit growth to converge towards deposit growth of around 13%. We see this as an opportunity to differentiate and serve our customers better. All of us are building an all weather institution that will stand the test of time. I will now request for me to take over. Thank you, Amitabh. Uh, good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening. We continue to make good progress towards building a stronger, consistent, and sustainable franchise. The salient features of the financial performance of the bank for Q3 FI24 across operating performance, capital and liquidity position, growth across our loan and deposit franchise, asset quality restructuring and provisioning is as follows. Our operating performance for Q3 FI24 was steady across MIMS cost and credit cost line. Consolidated ROA at 1.84%, consolidated ROE at 18.61%, Subsidies contributed 9 basis points to consolidated annualized ROE and 54 basis points to consolidated annualized ROE this quarter. The bank CET1 including profits stands at 13.71%. Organic CET accretion in 9 months FY24 including profits was 39 basis points. Change in regulations impacted CET1 by 70 basis points. COVID provisions translate to a cushion of 43 basis points over and above the reported CET1 ratio. Our net interest margin for the quarter was 4.01%, declining 10 basis points Q1Q. Yield on interest earning assets improved by 69 basis points YOY and 6 basis points quarter on quarter. This increase was offset by increasing cost of funds, thereby impacting NIMS. We have always maintained that NIMS should be looked at on a full year basis. For nine months FY24, NIM was 4.08%, better than nine months FY23 by 13 basis points. NII was at rupees 15, uh, 12,532 crores, growing 9% YOY, 2% sequentially. Fees at 5,169 crores, growing 29% YOY, 4% sequentially. Our granular fee is 93% of our total fee. Operating profits stood at 9141 crores growing 6% Q1Q. Core operating profit at 8850 crores, grew 1% quarter on quarter. Cost to assets at 2.49%, increased 25 basis points YOY. Net credit cost at 0.28%, improved by 14 basis points on a Q1Q basis and 37 basis points YOY, aided by higher recoveries and an upgrade of a large corporate restructured account. PAT at 6,071 crores, increased 4% quarter on quarter. GNTA at 1.58%, declined 80 basis points YOY and 15 basis points Q1Q. Net NTA at 0.36%, declined 11 basis points YOY. Our standard asset coverage ratio is 1.29%. All provisions by GNTA stood at 153% at 31st December 2023 improving 1,385 basis points YOY. We achieved the financial closure of the Citibank transaction. We request you to refer note six of the UFR for details. There is no material impact as the transaction was fully accounted for in FY23. Uh, we remain on track to achieve LD2 per earlier estimated timelines. Our progress on structuring MIM drivers continues well with improvements across all variables on a year-on-year -year basis. Improvement in balance sheet mix, loans and investments comprised 89% of total assets as at December 23, improving 154 basis points YOY. INR denominated loans comprised 95.8% of total advances, 
improving 250 basis points YOY. <coughs> Retail and CBD advances comprise 69% of total advances, improving 264 basis points YOY. Low yielding RIDS bonds declined by 8,170 crores YOY. RIDS comprise 1.8% of our assets as at December 23, compared to 2.73% of our assets at December 22. Quality of liability is measured by outflow rates improved by 600 basis points over the last two years. Given the liquidity and rate situation in the market, average CASA was 42%, declined 196 basis points YOY. However, this continues to be amongst the highest in the private sector bank space. We had good fee performance in the quarter. Total retail fee grew 36% YOY and 6% Q1Q. Fee on retail loans grew 26% YOY, 7% on a sequential quarter basis. Retail card fee grew 58% YOY, 12% Q1Q. Commercial card fee grew 35% YOY, 10% Q1Q. Fees from our third-party products grew 42% YOY, 4% Q1Q. And our commercial banking business fee grew 13% YOY and 6% Q1Q. Trading profit and other income at 385 crores was lower by 178 crores YOY and grew by 314 crores sequentially, mainly on account of better DCM and trading performance and reversal of MTM booked in previous quarters. Operating expenses for the quarter was 8,946 crores, growing 32% YOY and 3% sequentially. It is pertinent to note that there is no city BAU expense in Q3 FY23. Integration expenses contributes 4% of the YOY growth in operating expenses in percentage terms and 13% of YOY cost growth in rupee terms. The balance YOY increase in rupee crores of expenses other than above can be attributed to 10% linked to volume, 47% technology and growth related investments and 30% from our BAU activities. Technology and digital spends grew 36% YOY and constituted 9% of our total operating expenses. Staff costs increased 19% YOY. We added 12,075 people from the same period last year, mainly to our growth businesses and technology teams. We've opened 350 branches in the nine months FY24, with 100 branches being opened in quarter three of FY24. Q1, Q increase in operating expenses is largely attributable to higher volumes. Provisions and contingencies for the quarter were 1,028 crores, lower by 28% YOY, but higher by 26% Q1Q. Adjusted for the prudent provision made for AIF investments, provision and contingencies for the quarter would be 847 crores, flat quarter on quarter. The bank has not realized any of its COVID-19 provisions, and this provision is entirely prudent. The cumulative non-NPA provisions as of December 31st, 2023 stood at 11,981 crores, comprising 5,012 crores towards COVID-19, restructuring provision of 587 crores, including unsecured retail being provided at 100% and the rest at first bucket NPA rates, standard asset provision at higher than regulatory rates of 2,216 crores, we catch it and other provisions of 4,166 crores. Uh, moving to growth across our liability and loan franchise, we gained 20 basis points market share on a year-on-year -year basis across our deposit and loan franchise. Please refer slides 19 and 20 for details around the quality of our liability franchise and slides on our loan business. The bank sold IBTCs in the current quarter aggregating to 5,754 crores. Grossed up for IBTC sale, the QOQ loan growth was 4% and the YOY loan growth would be 23%. Total deposits on a QAB basis grew 18% YOY. Our CASA ratio on a QAB basis grew 13% YOY and 1% sequentially. Our loan book is granular, well balanced, with retail advances constituting 59% of overall advances, corporate loans at 31%, and CBG at 10%. 69% of our loans are floating rate. 48% of our fixed rate loan book matures in the next 12 months. Breakup of the floating rate loan book by benchmark type and MCLR repricing frequencies set out on slide 11 of our investor presentation. Our retail advances grew 27% YOY and 5% sequentially. 75% of the book is secured for internal classification. 
QTFI24 retail disbursements grew 47% YOY and 10% sequentially. Unsecured disbursements were 22% of retail disbursements for the quarter as compared to 25% in the previous quarter. Disbursement growth in home loans was 37% YOY, small business and auto loans 33% YOY, retail agribusiness 46% YOY and personal loans are 61% YOY. Moving to our wholesale banking business, details of rating composition, incremental sanction quality is set out on slide 36 of our investor presentation. The domestic corporate loan book grossed up for IDPC sales grew 23% YOY and 3% Q1Q. The offshore, offshore wholesale advances are largely trade finance related and primarily driven by a deep city branch. 95% of the overseas standard corporate loan book is in Delhi and 91% is rated A- minus and above. The commercial banking book grew by 26% YOY and 4% quarter on quarter. The quality of the CDG franchise we are building and the strong relationship led approach is reflected through CBG new to bank book growing by 28% on a year on year basis and 84% of our CBG loan book is PSL compliant. Moving to the performance of our subsidiaries, detailed performance of the subsidiaries is set out on slide 69 to 77, to 77 of our investor presentation. Domestic subsidiaries reported a total nine month FY24 net profit of 1,108 crores, growing 17% YOY. The return on investment on domestic subsidies was 50%. Axis Finance Q3 FY24 overall assets under finance grew 38% YOY. Retail book constitutes 44% of total loans. Nine month FY24 tax <coughs> for Axis Finance grew 25% YOY to rupees 425 crores, and Axis Finance has a healthy car of 18.79%. Access Finance's strong asset quality is reflected with a net NPA ratio of 0.32% and negligible restructuring. Access AMC overall quarterly average assets under management grew 6% YOY to 2,62,398 crores, nine month back to death, 297 crores. Access Securities broking revenues for nine months grew 42% YOY to 757 crores and PAC grew 31% YOY to 198 crores. Moving to asset quality, provisioning and restructuring, asset quality continues to improve. The slippage, gross NPN, net NPN, and PCR ratios of the bank and segmentally for retail CBG and corporate are provided on slide 60 of our investor presentation. The bank has made investments in AIF aggregating 207 crores, details, of which are as follows. 46% of the AIF investments are in AIF that are directly or indirectly government owned or from sponsoring entities like NIIF, NABCID, and NABAD. The bank has not invested in any single AIF amount greater than rupees 50 crores. The portfolio overlap in AIF is 85% A- minus and above rated exposures and 15% AAA rated exposures. The realizable value at 31st December is close to the holding cost of the investment. The bank has prudently provided 100% of its entire AF outstanding agnostic of overlap as on date. Net slippage ratio annualized to that 0.5%, declining 43 basis points YOY and 9% Q1Q. Net slippages for the quarter were 1,117 crores, declining 35% YOY and 12% Q1Q. Net slippages segmentally were 1,988 in retail, 74 in our commercial banking business, and negative 945 crores for our WBCD business. Recoveries from written off accounts for the quarter were 635 crores. Net slippage in the quarter adjusted for recoveries from written off accounts was 482 crores, of which retail was 1542. Our CBG business was a negative 11 crores and our WBCG business was a negative 1,049 crores. For the quarter, 35% of our gross slippages are attributed, attributed to linked accounts of the borrower, which were standard and classified or have been upgraded in the same quarter. To summarize the performance for the quarter, Axis Bank is progressing there to be a stronger, consistent and sustainable franchise. This is visible through organic CET1 accretion 
of 39 basis points for the nine months FY24. Our COVID buffer of 43 basis points of overall capital adequacy. Our overall coverage at 153% of GNPA and limited restructuring of 0.16% of our gross customer assets. Consolidated ROE for nine months FY24 was 18.86%. 82 basis points higher than nine months FY23, an outcome of disciplined execution. The bank has ample and sufficient liquidity visible in an exit LCR of roughly 129%. Given the increased given the increased focus on the CD ratio as one of the multiple metrics to be tracked, deposit growth would be a key constraint to growth and advances in the short to medium term. We are well placed in the current macro environment. We continue to closely monitor geopolitical, inflation, liquidity, and cost of funds that impact our business. Thank you for your patience. We will be happy to take questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touched on telephone. An operator will take your name and announce it on in the question queue. Participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Chintan Joshi, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, this is uh, Chintan from Autonomous. Uh, 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 before I ask, can I just quickly get your LCR deposit number for reference? And then the question I have, you know, your comment you made that deposit uh, growth will be a constraint on, on growth overall. Uh, you know, how should we think about this? Like, do you think, uh, uh, you know, uh, these liquidity, tight, tight liquidity trends will ease over the coming months? Or, uh, you know, are we talking about a challenged uh, uh, deposit growth kind of outlook, uh, uh, not just for Axis, but for uh, the other banks as well. And then uh, related to that, what are the actions you can take on the asset side uh, to offset some of these uh, pressures? Thank you. So I think you spoke about LCR at, uh, at 118. Um, no, LCR where we are on an average for the quarter. Uh, typically, if you see over the last 18 quarters, we've bobbed between uh, 115 and 120. Um, that is that is where you know we're, we're quite comfortable, uh, especially given the uh, the outflow rates that we have been able to uh, you know, sort of significantly improve over the last uh, you know, three years or so. It is a it is a tight liquidity environment. I mean, uh, while the uh, while the policy rates are at six and a half percent, you can see that uh, that. Overnight rates are closer to 675, uh, and much of the curve is 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 at 7 percent and beyond. Uh, that is the that is the liquidity situation that we are seeing at this point in time. Um, it, it will require uh, intervention from RBI, and uh, I don't think that intervention is going to come uh, anytime soon. Uh, and so, therefore, the pressure on deposits uh, will continue as we go forward, which is which is therefore the point that Tunit makes that how much we will be able to grow uh, will be determined by how much we'll, we are able to grow uh, on the deposit side. Uh, you would have noticed that, uh, you know, thanks to all the initiatives that we had we had put together over the last uh, last many quarters, you know, sweating the franchise, partnerships, uh, technology like CD, etc., uh, have helped us gain market share. And I think that that is a play that we will hopefully continue to play uh, as we go forward on the uh, on the on the asset side um, uh, i think uh, uh, we will we will have to uh, we'll have to get a balance uh, between uh, between continuing to build a long term franchise with our customers uh, on one side and being able to uh, to optimize for nims and roe on the other side and i think that is that is a balancing act that we will have to you know continue to play uh, based on how liquidity and therefore deposits for us grows uh, in uh, in the coming few quarters. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was after the LCR retail deposit number. If you can, ha if you have that handy. 
think then we will we will anyway be publishing that number as part of our bazil disclosures you should see it on our website at some point in time later in the evening please thank you so much thank you next question is from the line of maru kachania from nuama please go ahead yeah hi i just wanted to check on bulk deposits so uh, the system liquidity got much tighter towards the end of the quarter would it be fair to assume that a lot of bulk deposits were mobilized towards the end of the quarter and the full impact on cost will be seen on the next quarter uh, that's my first part on deposits and my second part is on any comments on ldr given that everyone seems to be worried about the ldr of course you did mention about the deposit challenge and then some banks have admitted to rbi having discussed this one on one with them so where do you see your ldr settling say by fi 25 given the uh, i mean any broad range i don't i know you don't give specific guidance but So, Marok, this is Neeraj here. On your question around the bulk deposit pricing, I think uh, uh, bulk deposit pricing continues to be inching up steadily through the quarter. It's not just a quarter end phenomena. As the system liquidity has remained tight and the overnight rates have uh, inched towards the upper end of the corridor, um, it is kind of getting reflected in where the bulk deposit rates are and where the CD rates are, which are kind of very close to each other. I don't think this trend eases off any time soon. In fact, Q4 being the last quarter of the year, we'll probably see this continuing. Uh, the main driver will be how the liquidity in the system plays out and how Reserve Bank sort of deals with the liquidity. So I think that uh, uh, the trend is kind of there. Uh, it's it, it will play out steadily over uh, over a period of time. No, my question was that were most of your bulk deposits uh, mobilized towards the end of the quarter? we do it through the quarter varo our deposit mobilization process continues through the quarter so there is no uh, in some senses punching up towards the end of the quarter as we are saying to oh dear varo bada sir we moved away from this we were very hard to move away from this quarter and month and stuff so you know uh, maybe you know it has happened in the system but uh, you would also notice that we are perhaps the only large private bank who ldr the mortgage is uh, sequentially Uh, you know, and I think you should give us credit for that. Also, we continue to have one of the best outflow rates uh, in the industry. It, you know, which will continue to be demonstrated even during this quarter. Uh, and as we as we as we pointed out, even on the LCR side, we have always operated with the 115 to 120 band. The the movement is almost you know has been within this band for last eight to seven, eighteen quarters. Eighteen quarters. So you know. Talk about consistency in terms of how we have run the business and the liquidity coverage ratio through the cycle. So, I think just please keep that in mind. Uh, we raised large deposits through uh, the quarter, yes, at the right price, with big sense loss, and we'll continue to move forward. But there's nothing. There is no quarter end effect. I just want to move away from that. Please, you want to add something here? Marus, thank you for the question. I think the direct pointed answer to your question is if you look at. Slide eight of our investor presentation. You will see deposit growth presented on a QAB basis, and you will see that the QAB basis deposit growth tracks tracks NAD basis very closely, which will indicate to you that balances have grown through the quarter rather than at period end. Perfect. And on um, just the LDR thing, I know that it's improved, so it's. It's rare that in this quarter someone's LDR has improved, but any range you would like to give for FI twenty five? Maru, thank you for the question. Uh, we don't offer a range on LDR. We think there are multiple variables through which we manage our balance sheet. Uh, LDR is one of the variables. We do not have a targeted LDR that that we discuss publicly. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Suresh from Macquarie Research. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so two questions. One is on this uh, deposit mobilization strategy itself. Right. So, I mean, we were focusing a lot on retail deposits, but if I look at the same slide eight, it looks like almost sixty uh, percent plus of 
incremental deposits this quarter has come from non retail term deposits right which is grown 12 12% qoq so should we read too much into this is just one quarter phenomenon where liquidity has been tight and therefore you have to take recourse to bulk deposits or how should we read into this because it's a large number almost 60% incremental has come from nrtd uh so this thank you for the question couple of things i think while you look at slide 8 i will also request you to look at slide 9 and slide 8 collectively on slide 9 you will see that our retail term deposits have grown by 17% on a year on year basis and if you look at the trajectory of growth in retail deposits it was close to zero in december 22 and it's up to 17% This is in line with all of the efforts we are making to granularize the franchise, and the output of those efforts are visible in the RTD growth number. Yes, you are right that in the current quarter, NRTD has contributed to growth, but again, I think it is not a period and balance. It is coming from our corporate customers, and effectively, as Ravi often says. Uh, we are a universal bank we deal with retail customers and wholesale customers and if the wholesale customers offer us an opportunity to pick up deposits from them we'd be very happy to pick up deposits from them suresh so, i would add uh, your waafi very fair question i would add you to also think and take into account the outflow rates we have right so even if we are raising let's say deposits from our wholesale customers please remember that they are coming at a certain outflow rate which means that uh, you know uh, they they could the you know a decent portion would be non callable so we are it's not just you know raising some short term deposit it is we are we're trying to ensure that the balance sheet is structured right on a consistent basis so just keep them you know the only problem amita there is these deposits tend to be a bit more fickle in nature right if liquidity tightens i know till the time it's non callable it's fine but suddenly the corporate moves to another another bank in the market and you know there is a lot of bidding war happening by the psus in the market so you're confident that this doesn't distort the pricing curve on the cost of fund side for you right because you've gone ahead and raised a lot of uh, bulk deposits this quarter yeah so we worry are yeah so look pricing of the deposits is a market driven phenomena uh, it is not just in the bulk deposit side but even also on the retail deposit side we are making sure that our liability cost is in line with what our peers are offering so it is competitive on both the sides not just on the bulk deposit side yes bulk deposits tend to have a certain phenomena that needs to be taken into account but i have seen a good correlation between where the bulk deposit rate go and the where retail rates go over a period of time um the non callable feature which actually helps us make sure that uh, the outflow rates are not higher bulk deposits is the one uh, real hedge against this deposit shopping uh, in in terms of okay and just finally one question on capital i know you have of course uh, repeated your stance but still again for the benefit of everybody here at 13.7 um you know um, your peers of course are easily 200 300 basis points above uh, the number that you are reporting some of them actually uh, amitabh and puneet they keep internal thresholds of 14% permanent equity or one under the new basel 3 regime whatever it is each bank has its own threshold criteria at 13.7 are you comfortable to sure that you know with the outlook which is there and i mean can you share anything with respect to your internal thresholds there any guidance on that would be great thank you Uh, so this thank you for the question i think the framework that we've consistently adopted with respect to capital is we think about capital on two pillars capital for protection and capital for growth uh, under the protection pillar we look at regulatory capital as well as capital to protect domestic aaa uh, even at 13.71 we carry sufficient cushion over both those those variables on capital for growth i would just request you to look at what we put out on slide 16 on a 9 month period fy before we accreted 39 basis points of ct1 capital so we are currently in an environment where we think we will organically continue to accrete capital amitabh did 
indicate in his opening remarks that our house economists expect the growth growth at an industry level to be at the 12-13 percent range, and therefore we are really not seeing capital being consumed for growth given how our organic businesses are creeping. So we continue to maintain our position categorically that we do not intend to raise capital. I think uh, to your question and reference to Basel three norms, the one request I would have is the risk weights under Basel three are very different from the regulatory risk weights. So what you're seeing is 13.71 basis regulatory risk weights would be different in the Basel three construct. Therefore, again, putting that near onto your question, we still categorically maintain we do not see capital at the current stage and would not be this. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pranav from Bernstein. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking the question. Um, this had a question on your loan mix. Uh, you have continued to move towards, uh, you know, the higher yielding segments. Um, two questions on that. One, uh, with the risk weight change that has been announced, uh, do you see a change in pace of that transition, number one? And number two, do you have an end state in mind in terms of um, the split between mortgages and other consumer segments uh, that you have right now? So, so, consumer business, especially the personal loan business, has been growing. But if you see slide 22, uh, in terms of the investment trend, uh, quarter on quarter, that number in terms of composition is down to 22% from 25% in the previous quarter, which really means that uh, the other assets also are growing. So we are kind of comfortable with that. As we earlier also said, uh, we don't see any stress in the portfolio. The growth we see on the consumer loan side is a result of a few quarter efforts in terms of transformation projects being run and a lot of partnerships scaling up. So that we intend to continue. The loan mix is uh, in a desired uh, state as uh, we are progressing. Uh, can you just repeat the second part of the question? Uh, second part is more on a steady state mix that you're looking at. Are you at the steady state or is there some more transition that you expect to happen? Yeah, so we have been around 78, 80, secured, 20, 22, unsecured. That's what we've been uh, saying and holding for some period of time. If it goes to 75, 25 over a period of time, that also is fine with us. It's something which we have to keep uh, moderating and observing in line with the various uh, various developments happening uh, in the industry. And uh, currently, 75% of our retail books is secured. So. Um, so my question is more uh, related to the mortgage growth. I think uh, you've seen uh, almost for several quarters now that that growth has been uh, muted. Uh, so I was wondering if that was part of an uh, intentional shift to get to a certain loan yields. And therefore, if we should expect a recovery in the mortgage growth or if we'll see some more of this uh, loan mix shift happening. I think I mentioned in the previous call also that we are assessing every business based on risk adjusted return on capital. And uh, these, these asset classes stack up on that red off curve in a certain way. And whichever is higher on the red off curve or within obviously defined limits, we will try to push that business more in comparison to the others. It's not that the mortgage business is not important for us, it's a large business for us. But in a deposit constrained environment, we will obviously have a waterfall, and then waterfall, we will push businesses which give us a better return. So I don't, you know, we don't want to get caught up in, you know, specific numbers in each of the businesses, but we will play uh, depending on what makes the you know, most optimal sense for us. And and in a deposit constrained environment, the credit growth will get constrained, a lot of questions around LDR and so on and so forth. I think we need to prioritize where we want to grow, and that's exactly what we're doing. Understood. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Sir. Thank you. Next question is from Lan of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, and sir, on your opening remarks, you mentioned that the systemic deposits and credit growth uh, are likely to converge at around 13%. Um, is this like FY24 or this is like FY25? So any, um, any, any, any timeline for that number? 
I mean, if you look at all the commentary coming from uh, RBI and the governor and the commentary around inflation, I think it's quite obvious that this is not just next three months event. This will continue into financial year 25 and I think stay uh, during financial 25 for uh, you know almost the entire year unless something dramatic happens. We are still way off from or at least away from the target which RBI has in mind on inflation. There are still risks to that uh, inflation target. So I do not see interest rates coming down. I do not see RBI, uh, you know, taking the pedal off the constraining the liquidity. And frankly, the the biggest factor which is driving the, uh, the why the deposit rates are high or deposit growth is constrained is RBI tightening the liquidity. And I don't see that going away. So, you know, cutting long story short, uh, we do expect the deposit growth to remain constrained. And as a result, over a period of time, uh, the credit growth has to temper down. I, I, there is, if they have to converge at some stage. They can't keep running in two different or at very different levels for a long period of time. And this is not what we've been saying today. We have been saying this for quite some time also, quite consistently. Right. Right. So, sir, in that context, uh, at our current LDR, while it was improved quarter on quarter, uh, it goes without saying that the arch rate on deposit uh, for Axis Bank um, is much higher than the credit growth rate, right? That is how, uh, and you also indirectly mentioned that the deposit growth could be a constraint to the credit growth at least in the year. Is that the right interpretation? So, the, uh, one of the drivers of the LDR change over a period of time is how we've optimized the balance sheet. <clears throat> if you see our outflow rate on deposit has come down from roughly 26% to 21, 20-21% now. Um, and that has meant that we have preferred certain kinds of deposits over certain other kinds of deposits, right? The deposits which attract 100% outflow, we preferred not to increase that book or rather shrunk part of that book. And that has had an impact on LDR. So, uh, like we said, that LCR, LDR, NSFR, these are all important parameters that we look at while optimizing a balance sheet and uh, seeing how the balance sheet evolves over a period of time. All of these are important parameters, but at times, you know, there is a play between one versus the other. And a last, uh, a different question on, I mean, notice that you have around 10 million non access bank customers using Access Mobile and Access Pay. And I assume these are not free charge customers, right? Because that, that runs into millions or even higher numbers. So if you can provide some color as to what exactly is the offering that these non access bank customers are using and, you know, any medium term plans to convert these non to bank customers to offer other services or cross sell. Thank you. So you're right. These are not, um, you know, free charge customers. There could be some, some overlap, but in general, uh, these are not free charge customers. Um, we have been speaking about three types of customers, new to bank customers, existing to bank customers, and known to bank customers, customers that we know, you know something about. Uh, so these, this set of customers are customers where we know something about them. And uh, we have various programs where we are able to underwrite these customers and we are able to you know, sell personal loans, credit cards, et cetera, to, to these entities. Uh, we, are, we are a leading player uh, on the account aggregator platform. Uh, much of the uh, traction that you are seeing uh, is 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 through this route as well, and of course uh, through the various uh, UPI platforms that that we are present on. Thank you, and Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rikin Shah from IIFL. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. First one is on the uh, linking of the loan book to different uh, benchmarks. So we see that the repo loan uh, benchmarking, uh, the loans linked to the repo loans are up by almost 10 percentage point in last one year to uh, almost 48, 49 percent. Uh, that is in the context of uh, mortgage loan growth being slower. So just wanted to understand what's driving this change. Uh, in the context of uh, impending rate cut cycle that we may see. That's question one. And second, uh, just a small observation, the cost guidance has been removed uh, from the presentation. So uh, uh, do we need, uh, need to read anything onto this uh, or anything you would like to elaborate? Thanks. Uh, thank you for the question, Vikin. I'll take the second question first. Uh, we, were, we commented on cost on the analyst day and the comments that we made on cost at the annual day, which we continue to carry 
since then is as long as the benign credit environment allows us to continue to invest in the franchise we will continue to invest in the franchise we are investing for the future we are investing to build capabilities some of the investments are visible to, to you today the neo app the mobile app the tech stack that we have built the 350 branches that we have created so as long as we operate within a given view point we will continue to make the investment so we remain focused on managing our expenses when the need arises and we do believe that we can we can pull back that expense uh, if the need was so arises so i don't think there is that number that we used to put out was taken away when we discussed at length the bank's performance at the analyst stage it's not a take away in the current quarter currently Sorry, can you can you give me context to your first question, please? Yeah. So uh, we look at the loan book, uh, ba- uh, loan book being benchmarked to different rates, and there uh, the loans which are benchmarked to the repo rate, uh, the share of those loans have increased by almost 10 percentage point from 38, 39 to 48 percent now uh, to the repo uh, link. Um, so given the impending rate cut cycle, first I wanted to understand as to what's driving this uh, higher increase in the benchmarking to the repo, and second, uh, does Does this mean that uh, once the repo rate cut cycle kind of begins, uh, the transmission of interest rate yields will now be faster, or would you kind of course correct uh, before that? Uh, firstly, uh, we are not in the impending rate cut camp. So let me get that out of the way first. Uh, I, I think you know, as you know, that all of retail or, or much of retail and almost all of SME. is repolling and therefore as the as that book grows it continues to uh, to be repolling uh, we have over the last one year we have also seen uh, increasing use of repo rate uh, on the corporate side uh, for corporate loans uh, and that is uh, that is driving uh, you know that growth as well uh, so therefore it is most of retail almost all of corporate uh, all of sme and uh, and some part of uh, of the corporate side which is which is now repolling Understood. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry, Vikram. I'll just supplement what Rajiv said. Uh, if you look at our December 22 presentation, 68% of our loans were floating rate. Uh, as at December 23, it's 69%, which is floating rate. So there isn't actually a movement. It's just a play between the benchmark types. And effectively, over a finite period of time, the benchmarks will have to behave similarly across uh, a rate cycle. Sure. Thank you, Puneet. Thank you. Next question is from line of Kunal Shah from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Thanks for taking the question. So I'm not sure if you answered that because I missed uh, some part of the conversation. But uh, given that you always have been highlighting in terms of the growth targets, but now it seems to suggest that uh, our deposit is definitely a constraint. So uh, would we still continue to grow at four to six percentage points higher than the system average when you are highlighting that loan and deposit growth would settle at thirty nine percent, or does that also change given this uh, steady ratio as well as the deposit constraint which is there? Boss, you are trying to hold us quarter on quarter. I think we continue to maintain our guidance. That in the medium term, we continue to be able to maintain that four hundred to six hundred basis point differential. We are not changing. Sorry, sorry. We have said that we'll maintain the 400 to 600 basis point differential between industry and our growth rate. Uh, don't hold us quarter to quarter, but yes, in the medium term, we would we believe that we can maintain it, and we are not changing it. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, secondly, in terms of maybe earlier we highlighted last quarter that almost like the marginal cost of funds and cost of uh, deposits have stabilized. Uh, so where are we in terms of uh, maybe what would be the gap between the incremental cost of deposits and the um, uh, outstanding cost of deposits? If you can maybe not give the exact numbers, but the uh, maybe the how much is the gap left uh, between the two, uh, which will get uh, caught up over a period? Yeah. Kunal, thank you for the question. Particularly some deposits, yeah. Kunal, thank you for the question. What is maintain this marginal cost of funding has stabilized 
uh, it as long as the marginal cost of funding remains at where it has been for the last four to six months, we do expect our base deposit book to get repriced uh, through quarter four and quarter one of quarter four of the current financial year and a spillover into quarter one of the next financial year. Okay, got that. And uh, any levers on the uh, loan book side now available given that unsecured pie is also coming up? Though this quarter we see uh, sequential growth being strong in some of the high yielding segments. Plus now RIDF is also down to almost like say 1.8 or percent almost getting in line with uh, or maybe much below where the other banks are. So uh, maybe uh, there were a couple of levers on, on the uh, yield side. Uh, but but uh, which what levers do we see now going forward on yields? Uh, thank you, Kunal, for that question. I think uh, if you look at slide 12 of our presentation, we've from a mixed perspective, we've talked about retail SME as a percentage of loan book. Uh, we've talked about the INR, non-INR book. And those are the two observations that you are pointing out have got into the 69% and the 4.2% respectively. We also flagged off a third lever when we speak about our yield optimization journey, which is a sub-segment shift within the wholesale business, uh, which is still to play through. Uh, the other element is that if you look at our bank balance sheet, only about 14 to 15% of our advances are unsecured. So we, we do still have some play at a full bank level uh, between secured and unsecured exposure as we move forward. So short answer to your question, yes, there are some levers that have been optimized, but there are other levers that we can still work through in the coming quarters and coming years. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Saurabh Kumar from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just one question. Uh, sir, on this wholesale credit side, so you've had a large recovery. Uh, so two things. One, can you help us with uh, what is the quantum of the, uh, uh, on the written off book, what is the quantum left? And how long would you expect this uh, negative credit uh, cycle, I mean, the recovery cycle in the corporate to last, negative net leverage in the corporate to last? Thank you. Uh, Saurabh, thank you for your question. I think if you look at slide 62 of our investor presentation, you will see a table that gives you the cumulative value of credential write-off till date. The number at Q3 FI24 is 40,211 crores. Uh, of this, how much will the corporate? The value over, sorry? Of this, how much will the corporate? Uh, we don't break this up between corporate and retail, but if I just if if I just give you a context, 40,211 crores. This is cumulative value. Uh, we have been recovering uh, against this value over a period of time. I think to your specific question on data point on what is corporate and what is corporate recovery likely to be, uh, we have directly commented to say that we do expect credit costs to move up in the first stage recovery from written off accounts will reduce and over a period of time we do expect uh, credit costs to move up for the system and for us. Uh, all of us are operating below uh, long term through cyclical credit cost numbers. Hence that's the trajectory that we expect to see over time. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Param Subramanian from Namora. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question again is on deposits. Um, so historically, you know, we've uh, you know we've pointed out in the past that we are strong in the government business, and one of the reasons for the tighter liquidity is government money going out of the system. So uh, when that money comes back, uh, are we better placed compared to the rest of the system? Any sort of gearing you'd like to highlight over there? Um, yeah, that's my first question. So you're you're right. Um, you know, historically, uh, we've had a strong relationship uh, with the government at uh, the central, state government, district, panchayats, uh, right down to the beneficiaries, um, and we continue to leverage on on those relationships. Increasingly, uh, what the government wants is 
uh, is technology solutioning to be able to manage this flow from the consolidated fund of india all the way down to the beneficiary and we've been providing to the various governments various state governments uh, various departments of uh, and ministries uh, these solutions and and we have uh, a a significant market share uh, among private sector banks as far as uh, government business is concerned um it is the government is 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 looking to get more efficient uh, in terms of these cash flows so in the long term i think you know in, uh, as much of these flows become more and more digital uh, you know the amount of float in the system uh, will reduce but i think that, that is not a problem that we will have tomorrow but you know over a period of time it could it could potentially uh, you know sort of play out but i think the point that you are making is uh, is that uh, there is money lying with the government uh, and uh, Uh, and therefore there's there's liquidity tightening um, i think you know to some day, the way that the government uh, the the rbi thinks about liquidity is the liquidity pool that is lying in the banking system uh, the money that is lying with the government uh, because that that government money will either come through uh, will uh, either come through in terms of salary payments at the, at, at the beginning of every month uh, or payments uh, to the to the state governments Uh, and for infrastructure spend etc so there is a bit of a lead lag uh, as gst payments go to the government and and some of these payments come to um i think you know one of the things that's been happening is is revenue numbers for the government have been very strong uh, and so therefore their liquidity build up has uh, has been quite strong i do believe that i mean maybe for the next couple of months as the the code of conduct for uh, for the elections which has you know now pretty much been announced for april 16 uh begins to kick in uh, there may be uh, some slow down in terms of government spending but all that will come through uh, as we go forward perfect that, that that's really helpful uh, but uh, could you provide any say numbers in terms of market share you did you know, highlight that you have a significant market share but uh, market share also a percentage of your total deposits uh, say contributed by the government business uh, sorry can you uh, market share any any numbers on um, you know the market share you highlighted your uh, market share in government deposits is higher uh, um, so any numbers you can give over there yeah. we don't have i mean uh, you know one of the problems that um, you, you you will always face is is that there is no public data around this uh, so we know some of these numbers um, because of some of the work that we've done and some anecdotally so not really looking not comfortable sharing that number Okay. Okay. No problem. And and my other question is on the again on uh, repricing. Uh, so what are the price actions we have taken on um, unsecured uh, retail and as well as loans to NBFCs? Uh, you know, post the RBI increase in risk weight. Yeah, those were my questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, Param. I think uh, on incremental disbursements, we have increased pricing on uh, personal loans. Obviously, you would appreciate that it is a competitive market space, and therefore, how much you can pass to the customers depends on market conditions. But uh, we have increased pricing on the loans, and we are seeing a better yield come through on our PL portfolio on incremental disbursements. The back book is entirely fixed. So we're not likely to see that repriced till it gets repaid. Uh, on NBFCs, uh, we we are in the process of passing on the rate hike to the NBFCs. It's a function of when the loan is due for repricing. But we have seen a marginal uptick in gross yields on our NBFC book uh, this quarter compared to the last quarter. Perfect. Uh, Thanks, Sunil. Just one more question, if I can uh, squeeze in. So, uh, did I catch it correctly that we are you are not going to be held to the 2.1 percent cost to assets exit ratio that you are you know guiding to say by end uh, end of FY25? Um, so that is not something we are looking at currently, is it? Param, what I said is, if the environment permits us to invest, we would like to invest for the future. uh that's what i had said when we when we did our analyst day uh given the benign credit environment uh we would like to continue to build the franchise for the future uh as long as we can deliver in and around our aspiration or our metric okay got it puneet uh, thanks a lot uh, all the best to the team thank you thank you a request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant 
If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. Next question is from the line of Samir Bise from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, thinking around this liquidity tightness, uh, wanted to get thoughts from Amitabh on um, how do we think from the second order derivative perspective of of this phenomenon. Uh, would you worry on on potential asset quality issues? Uh, are we are we still some time away from that? And what would you uh, see as signals uh, if 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 it kind of persists for a longer time? Well, it's difficult to predict at this stage. I think it's given where the Indian banking system is, where the consumer sentiment is. Uh, yes, and the way the regulator is watching the matrices so closely and so actively. I do not see the second order impact coming through, uh, you know, in a any big or significant way. But, you know, ultimately, we are in the risk-taking business. It's very difficult to say anything with surety. I mean, all of us are watching our numbers very, very closely. All of us are aware that the times are so good that we do need to watch our numbers closely because this is when we might be making some mistakes. No signs as yet. But will it, this potential, uh, you know, tightening situation, pricing might lead to a second order impact? Only time will tell. I can only assure you, at least from Access Bank perspective, uh, we are looking at everything possible we can very, very closely and trying to assess if there is any signal out there which could be telling us that uh, things could be going down, like going south in some form or shape. But at this point in time, you don't worry on that, uh, on that side. That, is that fair? Oh, risk taking business have worried all the time. <laughs> uh, thanks. And uh, just quickly, can I have a, a breakup of the gross slippages across businesses? Uh, thanks for the question. Our gross liquidity for the quarter were 3,715 crores. They declined 2% year-on-year. Our segmented is at 3,384 crores for retail, to 138 crores for CBD, and 93 crores for the WBCD business. Oh, uh, this is helpful. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question and congrats on the quarter. And I don't mean to harp on this too much. It's been discussed quite a bit. But uh, if you had to reduce your LCR, just want to understand manage management's approach, would you rather slow down loan growth or get the required deposits through NRTD and compromise a bit on NIMS? Uh, thank you for the question, Tiran. I don't think there is there is one answer to that question. It is not a choice of either or. It will be a mix of both that we will we will work through. We can't really say that we are willing to pay any price for a deposit to fund our loan growth. And similarly, we are not saying that if deposits are far too expensive, we will not grow at all. Uh, we operate in a model where we will optimize both variables. So the honest answer is there will be a path that we will find to grow with deposit cost increases as they move through in the future. Got it. So in the interim, it is fair to assume that there is a chance your loan growth does not grow four to six percentage points higher than the industry in the interim. That's a fair uh, assessment, right? Uh, Kiran, I think the... The request I have of you is the 400 to 600 guidance that we had was basis the structural strength of the franchise, and we said that that's the number that we will target in the medium to long term. Uh, we did not hold ourselves ever accountable to do that number on every sequential quarter basis. The comment that we added through this call is given where liquidity is in the market today, we do expect deposits to constrain advances growth. Uh, we will operate within both those metrics, but we are not moving away from our medium-term guidance of 400 to 600 basis points faster than industry credit. Got it, got it. And just secondly, can you talk a bit about what has changed in LAP? Uh, like, until two quarters back, we were barely growing 1-2% QOQ. Now it's picked up to 6-8%. So maybe if you could just uh, 
help us understand what changes you've made to uh, to drive growth here. So, I mean, lab is uh, uh, lab growth is an outcome of uh, some of the transformation projects which we have been running. Uh, during the last 12 months also, lab was outgrowing uh, within the mortgages business. Uh, this year, we've seen a lot of stuff uh, come together in terms of uh, delivering the growth which we are seeing. Uh, portfolio quality remains uh, strong, so we expect uh, this growth to continue. <laughs> So we like improve the turnaround time, done more something would have changed that we started. We can't hear you clearly. Oh sorry, I meant have we improved like say our turnaround time, have we added distribution or new partners? Something would have changed that it picks up uh smart. It's a, it's a mix of everything. We've added partners, turnaround time has improved, our channel management has gone gotten stronger, sourcing from branch has increased, we've gotten deeper, deeper distribution into our rural Bharat banking branches. So it's a host of initiatives across the board uh, which we've been working on and that's what has resulted uh, into, into this outcome. Got it, got it. Okay, that's useful. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shubhranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, got a couple of questions on the credit card piece, which is on slide number 22. So when we say that 52% is ETB and 33% is known to bank, this entire 33% known to bank is coming from the Flipkart co-brand. That's the first part that I wanted to understand. And also the definition of known to bank. Uh, the second part is what is the mix of revolvers, EMI, and uh, 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 personal loans uh, uh, here in the uh, uh, and transactors here in the uh, mix. And uh, what would be the ballpark ROI that we make uh, on a steady state basis in this business in the credit card business? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Thanks for your question. This is Arjun here. So I'll try and cover all of it. Uh, KTB refers to known to bank, which is a set of customers where we have some information about them, but it's not exactly a customer who has an existing some other uh, product of the bank. May not be a SA account, may not be a loan, but they do in many cases come from our partners where we have uh, compliant data sharing arrangements, which allow us to get a better insight about that customer. No, all of them do not come from Flipkart. We have a similar rate with multiple partners. As you know, we've got partnerships with Airtel, we've got partnerships with Samsung, we've got partnerships with Google, and also Flipkart. So it's a mix of uh, partners. Uh, we do not uh, uh, share, unfortunately, uh, portfolio-specific and segment-specific metrics at the third level, such as uh, EMI and, uh, and revolve rate. But suffice it to say that the broad trend we have seen in the past continue to hold out this quarter as well. Not sure I can say much more than that. Uh, your third question I couldn't quite catch. Would you mind repeating that, please? Uh, what would be the ballpark uh, ROA of the credit card business on a steady state business? Uh, steady state business, not like uh, in this quarter or quarter gone by. That's, that's right. Yeah, no, that unfortunately is something we can't share at the product level. Uh, but we do track it, but we can't share it at the product level. I'm sorry. Right. If I can just, in that case, just squeeze in one last question. What is the uh, uh, absolute dollar value of the cost of acquisition for existing to bank, a known to bank, and an ab absolute open source customer? Uh, this is a product-wise, segment-wise question. And again, we, are, we we can't share that level of granularity in terms of the metrics. No issue, sir. That's a plus. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Puneet Sharma for closing comments. Uh, thank you, Neeraj. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time uh, this evening to join us. If there are any questions that remain unanswered or there are follow-on questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to Abdeep and our IR team, and we'd be happy to pick them up. Uh, thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you very much. On behalf of Access Bank, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.